Hello and welcome back. In this next mini video, we're going to be answering the question, what happens at the inner mitochondrial membrane? So we talked before first about glycolysis, the bottom line. This is the first stage of cellular respiration, the process by which we convert food energy into cellular energy in the form of ATP. The second major process in cellular respiration is the citric acid cycle. And we got the bottom line of that. Now with both glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, both of these processes all right, resulted in the formation of NADH, this electron carrier molecule, which I've been saying flies off to the inner mitochondrial membrane. And those electrons are dumped off at the proteins that are embedded in this membrane that participate in the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Same thing, of course, happens in the citric acid cycle. NADH and FADH2, those fly off to the inner membrane. And now, here we are looking at the mitochondrial inner membrane, which I've illustrated as two parallel lines. This is our phospholipid bilayer. So just for the sake of us knowing what we're looking at, I've drawn two little phospholipids facing each other. I'll draw another couple right here so that we know that this is a phospholipid bilayer. And each of these little oval shapes, these are membrane embedded proteins. These are proteins of the electron transport chain. Okay, so let's label these ETC proteins. All right. Now, we have some familiar looking little guys down here. This little Lego piece with the electrons on it, this is our NADH, okay? This is the reduced form because it has the electrons loaded onto it. Now, NADH is gonna fly in from citric acid cycle or the cytoplasm or the cytosol for glycolysis, whatever. It's gonna fly in and it's gonna drop off its electrons at this first protein of the electron transport chain. And when it does so, it is oxidized, right? Because it loses its electrons and it's oxidized to NAD+. Okay, important question. What can we do with NAD+, well, it can fly back out to the cytoplasm for working in glycolysis again. Okay, so now NAD, NAD+, it can participate again in this reaction here and pick up some more electrons when we split the molecule glucose. Got it? Okay, so coming back. Here, these electrons are dropped off at this first electron transport chain protein, and the electron is passed from one protein to another protein to another, to another, and then finally, that electron arrives at the final electron acceptor, and that electron acceptor is O2, okay? Oxygen is the final electron acceptor, okay? So what happens when we add electrons to an atom? Well, when an atom has electrons added to it, right? When it possesses lone or unpaired electrons, then it wants to make a covalent bond with someone, right? And what can we put onto oxygen but hydrogens? So we can split this water mole, uh, excuse me, O2 molecule, add some electrons to it, and we get water as a byproduct, okay? So, Let's identify this other electron carrier. Remember the citric acid cycle? This guy right here, NADH is one of the electron carriers going off to the electron transport chain. FADH2 is another. So here we're showing FADH2. All right, being oxidized into FAD, all right? it's gonna drop off its electrons at this protein here. Okay, so why do we have to drop off the proteins? 
what's the big deal with transporting electron to electron, excuse me, protein to protein to protein to protein to protein to O2 to become water? That's not the big picture. The big picture is this. Every time an electron passes from one protein to a next, a hydrogen ion, which I'm going to label here in purple, is pumped through the other side. All right, so all of these little black dots up here, these are hydrogen ions. All right, hydrogen ions. All right, and you can see that here's some more hydrogen ions, here's some more. Every time the electron passes from one protein to the next, to the next, to the next, these hydrogen ions are going to be pumped up and across from the matrix side to the other side, the intermembrane space. All right, so what's going to be happening? Effectively, we are going to accumulate all this hydrogen ion on this side of the membrane, on the intermembrane space. Now when we do that, aren't we building up a concentration gradient? Yes, right? So there are going to be more hydrogen ions on the intermembrane space than there are going to be on the matrix side of this membrane. And when we have this hydrogen ion concentration building up on this side, we're setting up a gradient, and this gradient is called the Kimi osmotic gradient. All right, now what this essentially means is that we have an electrical charge difference from this side compared to this side. This side is more positively charged, which makes this side more negatively charged relative to this side, right? So it's kind of like a battery, right? You know how batteries have a positive side, a plus side, and a minus side? Well, in batteries, when you allow the electrons flow from the one side to the other side, that flow of electrons goes through your, the circuit of your device and powers that device. Okay, We're not going to get into electrochemistry of batteries, but we're building up this chemiosmotic gradient here, and it's kind of like setting up this battery. We have a lot of potential energy when we build up this positive charge. It's going to build and build and build and build. Eventually, these hydrogen ions are going to have to reestablish equilibrium by flowing back down through this channel protein right here and back onto the matrix side. Okay, We have to reestablish that equilibrium because we've set up this huge potential energy by, we've established a lot of potential energy by creating this chemiosmotic gradient. So the really cool thing about when they flow through, this protein right here, this protein is called ATP synthase, all right? This protein acts as a channel, but it is also an enzyme. And we know that by its suffix, right? A-S-E. ATP synthase allows ADP, adenosine diphosphate, to pick up a free phosphate so that we can make ATP. All right? So if you've ever seen how a water, excuse me, a hydroelectric power plant works, water flows through a dam and it turns a turbine inside of that dam and that turbine helps generate hydroelectric power. Now here it's kind of like that. It's an analogous situation because as the hydrogens from this chemiosmotic gradient flow through this channel of ATP synthase, ATP synthase takes an inorganic phosphate and puts it onto ADP to make ATP. And for each molecule of glucose that's broken down at the very start, about 36 ATP. In other words, a lot of ATP may, are made by this process. Okay, so we will summarize this process 
all, in fact, all three of these processes in the next video, and I'll see you next time.